These scientists with the Charles Darwin Foundation have spent the last 12 hours on a ship. Now they're off to look for penguins on the Galapagos island of Isabella. The islands are home to the only penguins found in the northern hemisphere, as well as the green ocean turtle, which is facing extinction. The biodiversity on these volcanic islands is unique, but climate change is taking its toll. Many species are finding their food sources in short supply, and that's affecting reproduction. The last time these scientists visited, they marked nests to facilitate counting the local penguin population. They estimate that it's barely a thousand. One of the biggest threats is the El Nino climate pattern. It causes extreme weather and rising temperatures. The problem is that climate change is making El Nino more frequent. And what's worse, it's making El Nino even stronger than it used to be. The result is that the penguin population has declined dramatically and can't recover. The giant tortoise is also endemic to the Galapagos Islands. They can live to be 170 years old. The Galapagos tortoise lives off grass, herbs and cactus. But if it can't find enough food, it stops reproducing. Things aren't yet that bad. The Charles Darwin Foundation is working in collaboration with the National Park Galapagos to set up more breeding stations. Ecuador is making the preservation of this unique ecosystem a priority. The tortoises are released into the wild once they're five years old. We've gone from protecting individual species to protecting entire ecosystems. The most important species for the Galapagos Islands ecosystem is the tortoise. It's at the top of the food chain of herbivores here on the Galapagos Islands. Meanwhile, the human population is growing. In the last 30 years, it's increased tenfold. There are now around 30,000 inhabitants here, and they're joined by about 180,000 tourists every year. This also affects the local wildlife's natural habitat. There's a growing demand for energy, like here on the island of Floriana, smallest inhabited Galapagos Island. In the past, it relied entirely on diesel for its energy needs. But that's changing. These days, Floriana is switching to generators powered with vegetable oil. This production plant was built with German help. It's a pilot project supported by the International Climate Initiative. Jatropha oil is delivered from the mainland. This form of almost completely climate-neutral energy production is a model for other Galapagos Islands. It marks a major step forward in climate protection. This place used to only have power for just four hours a day. Diesel fuel was transported in tanks, in metal barrels, and then pumped into dilapidated tanks at the port. They leaked, and the diesel was a serious pollutant. The added bonus of using Jatropha oil is that it boosts farmers' income in mainland Ecuador. The coastal region of Manabi is one of the poorest in the world. These days, local farmers are harvesting Jatropha kirkas destined for the Galapagos Islands. Previously, they didn't bother. It can't be used as food because its seeds are poisonous. 
But now that they can sell a sack of Jatropha seeds for $13, it's worth the effort. The plant is resistant to drought and pests, and its seeds contain an average of 34% oil, making it ideal for power generation. But Jatropha seeds haven't been a quick fix. The quality of the harvests was initially problematic, and the oil insufficiently pure. Special filters needed to be installed, and farmers needed training. These days, the quality is much improved. The engines here in the Galapagos Islands are very modern and have to meet very strict emission standards. The quality of the fuel has to be very high, and Manabi is in a position to supply this high quality. It looks like a storm is brewing. The research ship is now taking the German experts to another part of the Isabella Island. Gustavo Jimenez, a veterinarian and an expert on penguins, expects they'll establish that the penguin population has declined again since the last count. The experts locate the nests they marked using GPS. Later, they'll assess their findings and discuss what protective measures they need to take to curb the trend. Time is running out. And the little Galapagos penguin could be facing extinction.